and, and action. Great. Good evening, everybody, or afternoon as it may be, or early morning as it may be, or maybe not so early morning as it may be. So to everyone, let's see, what, what is it, uh, what did the, Walter Winchell used to say to uh, Mr. and Mrs. America and all around the world? You know, so uh, I'm Patrick Lichty, and um, I'm the cur curator of the... Um, all the ships at sea. That's it. Thank you so much. Um, and um, let's see. Uh, I'm the curator of the International Digital Media Association um, exhibition. Um, we, this year, we call it Weird Media. And um, we'll get into that in a couple minutes. But um, I think um, I'll give... Let's see here. Uh, a little bit of a background on the International Digital Media uh, and Art Association is that we've been around for about 25 years and we wax and waned and we're now in a waxing phase. And something that's uh, really interesting is that uh, the kind folks at the Winona State Foundation have uh, been kind enough to allow, um, basically uh, allow the International Digital Media Association to be a permanent partner with the permanent, permanent part of the Winona State um, Foundation. And so every conference will be here in perpetuity from, from now on. And uh, we're very excited about that because uh, that brings, you know, that kind of brings the world to Winona, which is part of this um, weird exhibition. And then secondly, it's the fact that um, it gives a really beautiful kind of bucolic desti destination to um to a you know a pretty good conference um that um uh i think people will be pleasantly surprised at and in the in the uh in the coming days so uh that's kind of the thing there so anyway uh what i would like to do is that uh i have a um let's see here i have a little something for you and just a little bit of background let's see here okay let's go in here and do the slideshow so um every year has a theme so this year is weird media and um the interesting thing about the, the notion of weird media is that it comes from the it comes from the German word weird, which um, you know the the three you know the fates or you know the three sisters in Macbeth were called the weird sisters you know so the idea behind the word weird which later became weird is something that's um, uncanny or unusual or something that it even it's like something that tempts the face so i thought this was a really good way to have a very inclusive show and a show that would uh, definitely have some things that um, would not normally be at, at winona state um so this is the laird norton building this is the um uh, this is the uh, Developing Center for the Arts uh, and uh, Art and Design at the Winona State University. Uh, from 1918 to 1958, um, the Laird Norton Company was one of the largest logging companies in the continental United States and um, based in Win uh, Winona, Minnesota. So um, Winona has a very storied past. Um, you know, it's like, oh, there's this little town on the, uh, on, on the river, but it's, you know, we're you we can walk to the um we can walk to the uh, mississippi river you know in 10 minutes you know it's no big deal uh we also have who's um a, another partner with us the uh, minnesota maritime um art museum who um where our uh one of our tech expressionists who isn't very often here very often was participating margaret dolinsky um she's here we'll talk about her her work and um, she's going to do a performance out in the, uh, um, uh, let's see, out in the Mississippi in her, her printed kayaks. And um, let's see here. We're also hosting John Keston, who's a uh, noted um, 
um, uh, electroacoustic artist, and we're working with um, a local music establishment establishment called Broken Records, and uh, we're actually going to have a fantastic uh, event with that. That we're there's a there's a band called Swashbuckler that's kind of a jazz uh, prog psych band that uh, we're actually everybody in my department that uh, in uh, mass communication and are big fans of, and um, so they're going to be. Uh, doing the late night set, and then John Keston and uh, you know possibly some of our students are going to be doing uh, some live DJ. And so the thing is, is that um, we have the conference at the um, you know at the university, the exhibition on Friday night. And this is really nice because the thing is, while we want people to be able to pay to go to the conference, you can go to for free to the to the exhibition. And to all the uh, all the satellite events that we're um, doing around here, so that's kind of it. So in weird, what we're doing is like, okay, what's a little bit uncanny? What's a little bit different? And um, you know, um, you know, how can we you know open up the the dialogue with that? I said this is that's actually my office actually, um, but that's uh, Winona State University, our our home institution. And our partner institution, Columbia College Chicago, uh, which actually I used to be a professor at as well. So, um, so we're very grateful to our institutional partners for this particular show. Um, let's see here. I think I have some installation shots. Okay, no, here's uh, our um, our one of our promo um, graphics done by um, Talon Mehmet, um, and actually he's very into the GAN sort of thing at the at the moment and uh so this is um this is our um our vinyl banner um piece for the for the conference that we've got out in front of the uh out in front of the uh, hall and here is the bumper for the show oh Sorry, that was a little loud. <laughs> so, okay. Whoops. So here's some installation shots. Um, I, I don't think we actually got the device audio there, Patrick, but I'm not oh, sure good. it matters too much. Well, you know what? No, actually it's fine. That's great because it was really loud. So um, the graphics are probably what matter actually. Um, so this is inside the Laird Norton building. Um, so as I said, it's, um, um, you know, it's a nice big space. Um, there's, there's Collins, uh, there's Collins contribution there, a uh, vectoral gesture. Uh, this is, uh, John, um, John Ramey and that's, uh, Mina Chan, who's out of, who's, um, at, uh, Micah in, uh, in Maryland. And so, um, we, Malavika, we haven't got your work up yet, but there it is. And, um, let's see, there's, um, Carter and um, oh, let's see here and let's see here okay and uh, Nagin Nagin's work here um, one thing that I thought was really kind uh, we have our director Davin Heckman's my uh, one of my um, academic partners in the department and um, we had a great group of um, jurors. We had Brandon Gellis, who's another uh, tech expressionist. Of course, um, you know, my my wife and partner in all things, uh, Nagina Tasabian, and who actually has, you know, really been um, super throughout this entire entire process, um, you know, really stood behind me a lot on this. And I'm I'm really incredibly grateful. Um, this uh, these two pieces are uh, from plant bot genomics. These are a couple of mutated cabbages that danced a party rock. And um, let's see here. Um, oh, wait, Jeff and Wendy. Yeah, I was in, I, I knew them from a, a residency down in Key West. I didn't. Oh, know there you go. The yeah, show. yeah, yeah. Awesome. They're in the show. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, plant plant bot genomics. Sure, exactly. And then uh, is built Ulias. Uh, who did these nice big prints and 
It's another shot of the year. I don't have anything of the uh, pieces up front like we have Joseph De Joseph Delap and um, uh, of course Cynthia Beth uh, that we don't have up yet. And um, let's see here, another shot. There's Tommy's piece. There's one of Tommy's two pieces actually. Uh, thank you much, Mr. Mr. Mintz. And um, and this is the main hall where we have Tommy's 20, uh, 24 foot uh, banner. And actually, believe it or not, from that from that rendering that I did. Um, oh, by the way, just back through the judges: Cynthia Beth Rubin, Nagin, Wade uh, Waller Stern from um, Transfer Gallery in in Los Angeles, and now head of uh, Gray Gray Area, uh, Brandon. And is that four? I think. And oh, and uh, and of course, Roger Boulay, who's our who's our gallery director as well. So that's uh, we, you know, fantastic. And the other thing I do want to say is that we had uh, people from the Midwest Music Fest, uh, Midwest Music Fest. You know, my you know my academic partner um, uh, Davin, uh, Town Nemet working on graphics. Uh, ooh, and and uh, families of folks. Um, that we know in the area and you know we're getting some support from uh you know the the uh Winona State Foundation and the uh mid uh and the Minnesota Maritime Art Museum and really I think the one thing that has been um oh we and we also just met with the um you know with the lead directors of uh, IDMA and they just looked at what we're doing and I think I think two things that I kind of say is that First, um, I'm just absolutely thrilled that so many people have been willing to come together uh, on an ad hoc basis and and do and put in and do just give so much help uh, to put something like this. And the IDMA directors looked and they just looked at the website, which you will see just in a minute, and they said, "Oh my God, we have never done anything like this." So we've got you know like five seventy five uh, inch. Um, TVs like this, um, about eight or nine um, laptops, um, and you can see that you know the the space here is just absolutely gorgeous. So, and I think that's it for that. Um, let's see what I think I would like to do right at this point is just kind of say, does anybody have uh, before we start going into any raised raised hands um does um does anybody have any questions or you know about winona or you know that you know or the venue or or whatnot i was wondering if you could just um give a little intro on idma and just sort of like what the organization is all about because i don't really know too much about it other than that you know You've been involved in it, and some of the other folks at BG, maybe. Sure, Bonnie and Dina. Sure, exactly. Um, so, um, as I said, um, IDMA has been around for about twenty-five years, and it has had deep ties to Bowling Green and uh, Columbia College Chicago. Um, you know, our our advisors, our advisors in graduate school, Dina Eber and Bonnie Mitchell, were very deeply involved at you know for a long time, and. Um, and then a um, uh, couple of um, um, couple of professors that uh, I worked with at uh, Columbia College Chicago, Michael Niederman and Tom Dowd. Tom Dowd was the uh, was the game designer for. Um, um, let's see here. Oh, let's see here. I think Mech Warrior with Microsoft Studios. So he was he was head of the game design program when I was there, and um, so they've been. They're they're currently. The chairs of IDMA at the moment. So, what's the scope of IDMA? And uh, IDMA is based around uh, media art, media scholarship, and then also, uh, you know, uh, professional media design. So, because uh, not only do we have artists, we have schol uh, scholars studying, um, you know, the society of media, but we also have people in professional uh, cinematography and um, and um, uh, filmmaking. And um, you know, in the you know, in in the professional end of the uh, you know of of the industry, um, another one of our partners is very much involved in uh, in digital design, 
uh, but they're currently having an event at um, at Madison, uh, UW Madison, the day we are. So we're not, um, you know, we're not we're not teamed up this year. So, but they're they're a great bunch. And um, let's see here. Um, I think one thing that I would like to say is that we have a lot of representations from the nodes. We have a lot of representations from the Iranian node. We have a lot of, uh, we have representation from the Canadian nodes. Um, I'm not sure how many other, but I know that there's at least the Iranian and the Canadian nodes that are, that are pretty well represented here, you know, and then, and then, um, you know, and then of course, uh, you know, Malvika has some of her work here. So we have representation from, uh, we have a representation from India. So this is actually we've got uh, as, as you can see from the list we've got about we've got about uh, about between 15 20 tech expressionists in the show out of uh, a total of uh, I think I think currently we're at 89. So not so bad. You know, it's actually I think we have as many tech expressionists that, as would be in a node show. You know, which I think is pretty good. And actually some of the folks that um, Winona State are interested in possibly starting to come to Salon. So I'm gonna push them a little bit. So anyway, so that's that's the background on Idma. Nice, and I, I appreciate that. And I also wanted to mention, you know, the idea of nodes is not necessarily just limited to countries. Like there could be a localized node in a state or region of the U.S., for instance, you know, oh, yeah, like sure. I feel like it's just a way for artists to get together on a local level and try to like put some oh, sure. something together um, that would be physical exhibition or mm -hmm. what have you, you know. But I appreciate mm -hmm. the, you know, the inclusion of uh, a lot of the the text expressionist artists. Um, it's awesome to be able to, you know, uh, use it use text expressionism as a platform to share opportunities. Sure, 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 sure. Is that uh um let's see here. Uh let's let's open the um let's open let's open the floor to Roz. Uh hi, uh Patrick. I didn't have an immediate yeah. question, but one thing that I just want to say that I appreciate because I, I live so much online now, <laughs> it's like mm -hmm. I feel divided. Um yeah. that it's really nice that you showed the physical building and you know columbia and the the that the, i found that a nice way to engage um mm. our two worlds together and and when we do shows i think that's really nice uh one thing we did with text expressionism we we did that only a little bit when we you know went inside every artist piece and everything we're usually inside and, yeah um, and that's great to see the inside too but i i really thought it was great to get a history and and a little review of the building and bring it into context since we're an international group. And I just think mm -hmm. that I appreciated that. Yeah, you know, the other thing that I also wanna bring up, and I think it's really important is that, um, let's see here, um, you know, in in our, during the show, uh, we were very conscious of looking at um, the the set of works that we had through, um, through an equity lens. And uh, the matter is, is that we did as well as we could with the, um, let's just say with the with the pieces that we had. Uh, we have a lot of representation from around the world, a lot of orientations um, and that sort of thing. But there were there were a there were a few holes based may, based entirely on the sets of works that were uh, submitted and not in regards to anything you know in regards to the jurors so there were there were a few holes you know and this is something that we're th this is something that we're thinking about as far as outreach is concerned being in minnesota especially and then um so that's that's something there and then we all since we have the minnesota maritime uh, art museum you know they have um various programs like flora and fauna and they're you know basically focused on uh water you know, you know, uh, art that works with water. And the one thing that I thought was another very interesting hole was the curator, is that in these in this particular set of works, is that um, in this particular set of works, I would say probably no more than about 10% were really dealing heavily with water or notions of the environment and and things like that and i you know, we're we're looking at things like 
you know, genetics, we're looking at things like genetics, artificial intelligence, um, you know, um, at um, astronomy, Scott Kildall's piece, uh, Exotopia is basically a VR guide to the known exoplanets and that sort of thing. But the thing is, is that uh, in this uh, in this day and age of our concern for, you know, our, our Mother Earth is the fact that uh, there weren't there weren't as many people as I thought might be talking about it at, at this point in time. So uh, as a curator, I like to see what people are doing and I like to see where I like to see where the gaps are. And these are and I think what happens is that I'm just saying as a little hint for um, that we have this museum here and they're a partner of our, you know, they're they're a budding partner with our uh, or with our uh, organization and this this exhibition space. Um, is that um, let's just say that to take a look at what they're doing and um, they have a program coming up, they have a, a set uh, a set schedule programs for the next three years. And if um, we will continue being open at IDMA here, I will, I won't be curator, uh, curator um, again for quite some time, but I'll be, um, I'll be in the staff here. And so, um, you know, that's just, that's just, that's just a little hint, you know, and sort of like saying, deal, we're, we're here on the mighty Mississippi and we're very concerned with ecology and water and all these things and people who engage these, um, these, these subjects, um, you know, might, uh, might get a little, might get a bit more interest than, uh, you know, than they might other other places. So that's the thing. Oh, by the way, um, if you saw in the, if you saw in the, um, if you saw in the bumper that uh, you saw this, you know, scanned weird thing, that is actually, we, it was in the visitors. Um, it was in the um, uh, visitor center at, for Wiz Visit Winona. And so we talked to um, we in mass communications are friends with the uh, folks at, uh, at at visit Winona because a couple of them are former students of ours. And I said, "Hey, we're doing this thing on weird media." I said, "Could we get that? Could we get that weird sculpture out of out of the visitor?" Says, "Sure, why not?" So that's actually a shot from about um, about an hour ago, and uh, we'll have lasers up on it and. That'll be kind of fun anyway. Which so far it's been a really, really, really fun, um, pleasant thing. So um, let's see here. I'm looking through here. Wow, we have a we have a nice turnout this time. Thank you so much. Um does uh anybody uh, does anybody else have any uh any questions? Or does anybody want to talk about their work? I mean, I can I can go over to the website, but uh, does anybody want to talk about their work? Does anybody have anything prepared? And I mean, I can go, I can go over to the website. I can bring up people's work. Uh, or does any if anybody wants to talk about their work, um, you know, we can we can go right in. So okay, let's uh, let's open the door to Renata. Renata? Or did she, she did, did, did she, did she crash? Oh, she, oh, okay, did you have your hand up, Renata? Okay, well, how about, you know what, Victor, Victor's in the show. One moment. Okay, great, uh, thanks. You sure. know, uh, I figured that, you know, you called this a preview, so yeah. I could, uh, be happy to share my screen and, and show my video that's actually in the show. It's yeah. only a minute, 17 seconds. And I could talk a little bit about it. Uh, okay, great. And uh, before I do that, uh, let me just read a little statement about the piece. So when you see it, you can have that in mind. Uh, it's called, uh, the video is called Anonymous Ambience SM Remix 2022. And the SM uh, stands for Space Matrix. And the title is a combination 
and a carryover from the titles of its original two source images or it, videos, I should say, two original source videos. And the, the piece is a remix of uh, two short electronic works, as I said, both from 2021 with some elements dating back earlier. The videos are were called originally, well, I guess I said that, Anonymous Ambience and Space Matrix version two. And the electronic soundtrack uh, for each of them was composed by Igor Amokian, AKA Chris Holland. And one of the ideas expressed in the video here is about how when you're meditating, trying to tune into a blissful state, uh, other perhaps distracting or dissonant energies will momentarily emerge in the mantric field. But if you relax, the bliss and relaxation will return. So that's kind of the general premise of the of the presentation. Mm -hmm. And subjectively, from my vantage point, there, there is an edgy modernity in the animation and in the sonic environment. In the bed of the meditative, the in that the bed of the meditative drone is produced by a machine-generated harmonic noise. So it's uh, mm. it's very electronic you know, of that era, it's, you know, it's being that the composer is an electronic musician and circuit bender. Mm. So there's this, uh, there's this interplay between uh, kind of harmonic machine noise and dissonant machine noise. There's sort of a, a dialogue between that and then, you know, uh, hopefully visualized yeah. compellingly with, uh, by, by my uh, visual element or graphical motion graphical element. Well, how about if we see it? Oh yeah, so now yeah, okay. Now now let me share my screen here. Okay. Okay. Gotta to remember to share sound. And, uh, and oh yeah, and many of you or some of you may recognize a lot of the imagery and recognize some of the sounds because you've seen these two pieces before. I've actually previously uh, shared these in previous expressionist salons. Uh, so that, that's something else to bear in mind. So that's, that's it. Yeah. Thank Super. you. Thanks so much, Victor. Sure. sure. My that's pleasure. Great. So you know what is that? Uh, I see that. Um, uh, I, I see that uh, Renata's uh, back up. So um, yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's hear from you. What's uh, we're, we're doing, uh, we're showing in our uh, video program, we're showing crying pink, which is good, which is a fine piece. And um, so um, have at it. Okay, thank you, Patrick. And thank you to the jury for the selection of my work. I'm just starting to share my screen. Mm -hmm. And go here. here. So as Patrick said at the beginning, the word weird comes from the German wird and it's got to do with fate, chance, fortune, or destiny. And it, in its original context, it meant strange in the sense of supernatural or paranormal. It refers to having the power to control destiny. So for example, in Macbeth, 
you have the three witches at the beginning of the play and they're referred to as the weird sisters. Intrinsically in the weird, there is disorientation. So in my work, Crying Pink, the main character is a clone. The, the clone is of an indeterminate gender, could be female, could be male, could be something in between there. And it's about the sadness of when you become a clone, you have to leave behind your emotions and your memories. The other character is a cyborg who is weird in a literal sense. There's a current discussion going on about whether AI is sentient or not. There's a New York Times article about the engineer from Google who was fired because he made the claim that AI had a soul. But it's an ancient, ancient conceit that we project consciousness onto icons, so religious statues, for example, or things like the haunted house, and this is extremely uncanny and disruptive to our conceptual framework. On an emotional or psychological level, it is disturbing. It is here that art speaks to us. Art evokes, and it is that same evocation that the Google engineer saw and felt in the AI. This happens across all cultures. There's currently even evidence that the Inuit of Canada's Arctic conceive of space as an inherently spiritual entity. Going back to crying pink, it's my incorporation of the uncanny within the convention of European literature and film. The fable of Beauty and the Beast comes to mind here, which is a story both cinematic mm -hmm. and like a poem. You have the face of a mysterious woman who dances with a monster and like the story of beauty, in this work you have spaces that are both gigantic and minuscule. The last thing I wanna say before I play the, the video for you is that the soundtrack, which is my own, evokes crying sounds. And those sounds heighten the theme of pain as a result of loneliness.
super piece. Thank you. It's great. So anything else uh, you want to add or shall we? Uh, I'm happy. Okay, good. Great. If you're happy, we're happy. So fantastic. Okay. Uh, Colin, I, I noticed that, you know what? I'm channeling Davo a little bit. It's like, hey, Colin, I saw that you were in the, uh, that you were talking about wanting to be in the queue. So why, why don't you go? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> yeah. For some reason, um, they don't, Zoom does not allow the host to raise their hand. Um, seems like a, a weird piece yeah, of functionality it, there. Well, you know what? That's, that's, that's perfectly appropriate for, <laughs> for this, right? Yeah, that, but it's all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I just started to feel Davo's voice in mind. And I just, oh, okay, that's, that's really odd. <laughs> okay, go for it. All right. So let me pull up my, uh, can you guys see my screen okay? All right. So the piece that I submitted is um, a work that is on a wood panel. It's a, a laser etched piece from my wireframe series. Um, this is it here. So it's a fairly small piece. I did it while I was a graduate student um, at Bowling Green with Patrick. Um, I remember. And uh, so this is the piece here. It's it's basically burned into a piece of plywood and then there's resin on top. Um, and uh, kind of the idea uh, with this body of work is taking the, um, the expressionist notion of a gesture and extrapolating it out into three dimensions. So, um, you know, this wireframe series is a body of work that I've been um, kind of developing since around 2005. And it usually starts with, um, making uh, these sort of gestural marks um, in, in software and then rotating them in 3D space and kind of moving them around and, and so on and so forth. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, the, it's kind of crossed over into a bunch of different um, types of media. It was really fun to be able to play with a laser etcher um, while, while I was a grad student there. This one was etched into a piece of slate. Um, was, you know, was, that in, was that in Saddlemire? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, was, yeah. Okay, uh, yep. That that sort of industrial laser etcher that was for the engineering students, and yep. Um, you know, I'd sneak in um, slate and go down to the Home Depot and buy marble tiles, um, and uh, and all sorts of other stuff. Actually, this hey, was another hey, one was, from that body I was doing. Work I was doing to you remember, I was doing toast. So I remember. I remember yeah. the toast. Yeah. The, totally. uh, yeah. Yeah. So. That was another one from that same body of work, but um, but that's yeah, that, that's that's uh, that's pretty much it, and um, that's you know, that's yeah, where I'm I at. think I think it looks fine in the space, and thank you. You know, on one hand, you know, on one hand, I thought you know, as as I was putting together the show, you were thinking about we we were we were thinking about um um we we're thinking about video, but the thing is, is that after um after um uh digital and beyond i said you know we absolutely have to have um you know physical space in the piece i'm really really grateful that you know that you were uh, able to um get some get you know but send that piece over so and i think it looks really great with um john ramey's piece so that's awesome that's yeah, i appreciate the opportunity thank you sure Patrick. sure sure um let's see here um well okay and then um is there um uh, does does anybody else have anything that they want to um that they that they want to present or should we go over to the website <laughs> i think we should go i think we should go malavika Yeah, hi. Uh, oh. <laughs> I think even uh, uh, Tommy also wanted to. He also oh, okay. Said earlier. Okay, didn't see. Didn't you know what? I didn't see that. So you know what? Definitely. Am I right, Tommy? <laughs> Mr. Mintz, please. 
Um, so, thank uh, you, Malavika. I mean, if you want to go first, I'm totally happy to, to go after you. Either I'm way. just trying to set up okay. my um, screen share on so an iPad. So why don't you go I ahead share... and I'll go after you. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Can I share the screen, please? Um, you should be able to. Um... Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I got it. First of all, thank you uh, to the Tech Expressions Salon. Because of uh, this, I got connected to Patrick's. And uh, thank you, Itma, for selecting my work. Now, um, inspiration is always, uh, for me, is the elements of life. Uh, the, the, I, I thought of that work I will be showing later. But uh, I thought of sharing some of the images which I have used. Uh, during this pandemic, I mean, which was totally unplanned, as you said, unusual, uh, because it was not uh, part, we never thought of okay, something will happen like that, which was very weird for me. So this technology always kept me engaged with the art. And uh, I was doing a lot of photography inside the house. And which later on, because of this uh, screenshot and different, all different possibilities, I converted that into um, uh, combined images. Like these are all the images I have developed on the on phone only through the screenshot. And later on, I have used these all different images for creating and developing my work, which is getting exhibited under ITMA. Weird. The name of this work is uh, uh, Pixelating Relation. This one is Where Am I? Logged in squares. And this one is hope too. Now, uh, the most important part is uh, for me, the all the photographs which I take is like sketches for me. And I have uh, whatever extent of this uh, weird or you can say these kind of effects I have gone through is because of the technology. I mean, we can think of maybe some of the effects manually through hand, but the extreme what I have reached in this, all these four work is only possible because of the technology, the digital art. And uh, another thing is that uh, when I'm working on the layers, I can go back and again, I can see what I have done. So I can, I mean, I can live, the life again, I can go through the whole work process again, which is not possible when we do it manually and painting. So I really enjoy always working with this medium and uh, thank you for selecting the work again. Thank you. It's our pleasure, and as you as you saw, it's um, it will be it will be on the wall tomorrow morning. So, there we go. So, uh, Tommy, hello, Vigo. Those are so fantastic. I really love those images. Um, mm -hmm. The um, let's see if I'm able to share a screen on iPad for the first point time in my life here. Sorry to you know while you're doing this, let, this with me. Let me let me let me tell you that um, 
um, Dav Davin Heckman and his. You, you know what? You brought in it. You brought an entire entire family together over art, and there was like Davin Heckman and his sons were, um, um, you know, basically working for the better part of day, putting up that twenty four footer, and they were just having a blast. And so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was great. That's fantastic to hear. Yeah, mm -hmm. so this is the twenty four foot print. I'm not sure if everybody's able to see this um, as I pinch and zoom in. Um, there's a huge amount of detail in these uh, large prints, and that's why I, I really enjoy doing them because you can really you know what? read I can't, all the detail. I can't, I, I can't see them. I can't see them. You can't see my screen right I can't now. Either. Oh. Can't see it. What are you? What are you seeing? Nothing. I don't. I I just see your name at this point. Black. Let's see. Well, I apologize. I'm going to stop trying here. Um, oh, really? Let's see. One second. Start podcast. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Here we go. There you go. Great. So now. There you are. Picture, hopefully. And everybody can see it as I pinch and zoom in. Let's see if this works the second time. Yeah, I can see it now. Great. So, so the, the experience I'm hoping to you know, provide the viewer with these very large prints is, is kind of an immersive in uh, you know, the actual world. This idea of you know, uh, the, the digital space being one that we, we exist in uh, mentally, being maybe materialized and, and surrounding us here. Uh, I have a, um, another view of the same print, maybe with a little more detail visible. Um, I have a, I mean, what, what we have are a panoramic views of different corners um, that are um, a sequence of time-lapse collages uh, stitched next to one another, um, providing um, views of places that are, are changing. Um, right now there's construction um, going on and um, you know, the, a, a very temporary sort of sense of a place at this moment. And um, I, I, the digital and time-lapse uh, methodology that um, I'm working with here, where the algorithm determines what ends up in the final uh, image and, and the fact that we're working with these ephemeral um, components, you know, bits or um, data, right? Uh, pretty much uh, is parallel in sensibility to this temporary sense, the ephemeral sense of space that we have right now in New York, and maybe has, have always had here. Uh, the Marquis de Lafayette supposedly said the only thing uh, permanent in New York is change. So um, that's what I'm thinking about when I'm making these um, uh, time-lapse collages. So I think um, we have two that are up. One is uh, um, two, two, sorry, I'm gonna stop sharing because I feel like I'm just gonna confuse myself at this point um, and come back. Is everybody back? I gave back the screen, right? Yes. Great. So um, yeah, I think um, it's really fantastic to see these uh, large uh, fabric prints that Patrick has, I think, in his background even right now, uh, hanging in this big, beautiful space. It really, um, uh, the, the materiality of the print um, is something that I'm, I'm very interested in um, and uh, find that it, uh, by the way, people, uh, signs.com, S-I-G-N-S.com is how I had these prints made um, on fabric. It's a polyester poplin, and Patrick can attest to how easy it is to ship it. <laughs> we lose Patrick. Where's Patrick? Did I mess up and kick him off with my screen share? I don't, I Boy, don't that's, think that's a wild screen share. You could do that. All right. <laughs> um, hmm. Well, you're still recording, Colin, right? So we're not going to lose everything beyond this we, point if you pop No, back. we we are um, still recording. Um, yeah. So, um, well, let's see. Is there another artist? Who I, I do share? see that there is um, something in the chat from one of the artists. Azra Khani, I think, is that a female artist, Nagin? Oh, yes. Uh, Some expressionism uh, Iran artist uh, wants to talk. 
So she, I think she had a problem with her microphone. So I can show some of her works and, uh, and uh, you read it, please. Sure. So um, she says, um, hello, friends. I hope you are fine. I'm very happy to be with you and for my work being displayed in 2022 Weird Media Exhibition. I am, can you pronounce the name? Asra? Asra Khani. Uh, Asra Qara Khani. Okay, thank you. And I am 32 years old. I've been working in the field of digital art and graphics for 17 years. I've been a physical artist for a few years and I've worked mostly with Conte pencils and oil paints. And then I started to work with digital pens. I have held several exhibitions and have been ranked more than 26 times in different festivals. I've been working on NFT for more than a year. I love details. My pseudonym is Miko, which I have taken from the word microscope. My works are mostly composed of faces, which are combinations of faces and girls and sea creatures. The name of this work is Mira Shellen. It's a girl seagull, a girl seagull with a net on its head inside in which small fish are trapped. Seagulls catch small fish. This is a natural law that helps the cycle of nature. This is uh, Asra's page in the show's uh, website. Also, she's very active uh, in NFT and she's working on a collection of uh, donkeys. Um, so this is the expressionism, uh, expressionist artists uh, in the IDMA show. Uh, so I think Patrick is coming back. He has problem with the internet. So maybe um, someone else wants to talk about their work. Um, I can talk a little bit. I've just transitioned from my phone onto the screen. So oh, I yeah, yeah. Okay, so I stop sharing. I can show something. I mean, not something. I can show the world. There is that exhibition. <laughs> nice to see everyone. Nice to see you too. Thanks so much for taking me into this fantastic exhibition. So I think I can... Um, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's really great. I'm honored to be in, in the company of this weird media. So I have work that is like brain AI in the section of video art, I guess. Uh, and brain AI is an interactive installation where AI organism consumes human emotions in order to become human. But it kind of happens through, or it's mediated through uh, physical robotic machine with cylinders that touches people while they interact in virtual reality um, by providing haptic feedback. And the whole environment is created by participants' emotional input, mainly anxiety. So the situation they in generates anxiety through the sound and uh, through physical elements. And then this anxiety is being fed back to the machine that produce uh, different spaces and like each space is individual because it's all depending on your anxiety and then at the end this robot AI algorithm synthesizes those individual experiences into a collective anxiety pavilion which I want eventually to be in to build outdoors somewhere then all people who experience this exhibition could come and see how they contributed to the structure of architectural pavilion. So this is what it is. And I mean, I don't know, should I, if I share screen, I should be able to show, right? I think it's here. Oh. It's loading. Um. Can you see it now? Yeah. Can I you see, see it? it? Yes, yes. 
Yeah, okay, so I okay, so is going to be like this. And this is the exhibition at Ambika at Ambika P3 with my other work so that I saw a shoulder and this is where the brainy eye was installed in its first iteration. Thank you. What happened while I left, while while I had a uh, uh, complete client um, update and crash of my system? Oh, welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. Look, how is the system okay? We're all good now. So, okay, I think you went. So, thank you, Uli. Um, so, uh, Carter, you also have a piece in. Okay. Is there Mm -mm. Um. Here, can everyone hear me? Yes. Yep. Okay. This is the page, beautiful page you all made, <laughs> and uh, it has more explanation of what I'm doing. I'm going to just be short and show the animation. Um, Great. I became interested uh, in um, Part of atomic particle collisions in the late 70s and a friend of mine who's a physicist showed me his experiments uh, with cloud chamber photographs at uh, Stanford Linear Accelerator. And I started incorporating images of that into my paintings um, through silkscreen. Um, but in 2004, I discovered processing where I could actually create particle collisions. So, um, that's how I create my paintings now, making particle collisions and trans transforming them into paintings. But I'm also, it's an animated process of where the particles collide and form. And so I've started, I started making animations themselves. Um, this is one that's in the show. Um, and I'm just going to fast forward. Mm -hmm. uh, they, I'm playing around with this sense of time and things forming, mutating, and dissolving. So these these are, I'm not going to show the whole thing because it it takes time to view it, but it, this will give you a sense of what it is. And um, it's on my website and it's on the website for the show. And thank you for including my work. Absolutely. Absolutely. Did, did, did you ever do the CERN residency? No, I haven't done that. Okay. Um, I tried once a long time ago. Uh, mm. I don't know. Okay. But I, I feel like I have the tools to create what I want to do and the, and explore forms, but I'm sure I could learn a lot by going to CERN. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was I was thinking of the amount of support that you get for, for doing that. You know, that, yeah. that, always helpful. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank yeah, you. it's always, always, always like your work. So thank, thank you. you. Yeah, great. 
Okay. And, um, oh, okay. And I'm just getting, I'm just getting um, caught up here. So um, let's see here. I think, um, did, I'm, I'm sorry to be kind of catching up a little bit. Uh, let's see here. I guess uh, Nagin was saying that um, um, she described a little bit of the work and I'm wondering whether there's anybody who wanted to, uh, um, let's see here, uh, Marja? I see, yeah. did, uh, Hello. did, have you gone? Okay, great, welcome. Okay. Can you hear me, everybody? Yes. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone, and I'm I'm so happy to be in this meeting, and thank you very much for um, just selecting my artworks. Um, let me share a screen, and it's here. Uh, it's. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Let me. It's um, one of uh, the illustrations I just uh, did um, for a collection uh, some years ago. It was called Apocalypse Now. And the pieces were just, I mean, the artworks were uh, just based on uh, famous movies. And I just uh, made a parody of the movies uh, in a very um, absurd way, in a, I mean, hilarious way. And um, in this piece, uh, I am just showing um, family uh, in, a, in an atmosphere of just um, being um, just stoned in front of the TV and being brainwashed by TV, by um, just uh, consumerism. And I just uh, wanted to show uh, a just chaotic um, scene of the uh, of human beings uh, daily life today. And uh, the, that um, person from the above who is uh, going to burn everybody <laughs> uh, is me, myself. Um, the artist is going to uh, save everybody uh, from their um, just banal life, from their um, just pathetic life uh, by burning them out. It's just something exaggerating. I never burn people, but <laughs> I wanted to show something um, gothic, something gr grotesque, uh, excuse me, something uh, to uh, criticize the uh, lifestyle of today's people in front of the TVs. Uh, and I think it's so much weird. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Let's see here. Okay, you know the um, actually some some of your work reminds me a lot of uh, what is the early pop artist um, Hamilton. You know that sort of thing. I said, yeah. Yes, yeah, I'm a, so much in, inspired by Hamilton. I mm, love. Him. <laughs> yeah, I was I was just thinking the same thing. It reminded me of his famous piece. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. that's, the uh, uh, the. Mm, what is going on in modern uh, houses, I think. Yeah, I was prompted to Google it. Uh, <laughs> just what is it that makes today's home so different, so appealing? Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, it totally reminded me of that. That was good. Very yeah, nice. It's, a, it's an appropriation of, you can say, mm -hmm. an appropriation of that piece. Oh. Because so, I love it so much. <laughs> great. There's, uh, uh, one, one thing that I want to kind of want to do is that while we have so many people in um one thing that uh that's been done on the uh on on the site is that uh there's a uh, there's actually a text freshness um uh selection so uh i realize that we um call we tend to we tend to like to go about an hour and a half right on the on the um on the recordings right yeah we go through uh till about seven i'd say um, sure five maybe okay let's see here got it okay so i just wanted to basically get go down through here and um you know go through a few more few more people um 
you know, as let's see here, we've already seen um, Colin Carter. Um, so we um, haven't seen uh, Diane. We talked to Victor. Um, also, one of my colleagues in um, um, at um, um, Winona State, who did an incredibly powerful piece, and I, I can't really hope to um, speak for him, but I do want to show you his piece because it's it's uh, quite an incredible thing. Um, is that um, is that this is uh, Town Nemeth, and um, this actually a uh, let's see here, about a six by six foot nine um, piece um, work. And it also has um, incisions and sutures as, um, and um, stomas as he has, uh, he is currently recovering uh, from throat cancer. And this is one way I think and I can't, I won't speak for it any more than that because I absolutely cannot. I do not have this experience. But on the other hand, is that everybody who's seen this has absolutely thinks it's been an incredibly powerful piece. Um, just, but on the other hand, is that using um, this is one way I think in which, um, you know, GANs and AI uh, can be used in a way that's, um, um, it it surpasses the process. Um, in other words, it's kind of like how the how the body is reshaped and all that sort of thing. So I think this this particular process speaks extremely well to that. Um, and I think this is something where Talon has done an incredible piece of work. Um, let's see here. Uh, also, our um, let's see here our mentor. Uh, Gregory Little uh, has a piece, uh, a video piece actually called In Soft Echoes, which actually, um, if you're familiar with his painting work, this is it actually, the one thing I think is very interesting about Gregory's work is the fact that, I mean, he's a trained painter from Yale and he creates his own, he grinds his own pigments and he all but makes his own canvas. He doesn't do that. But, you know, in other words, he's such a, she's, he's such a formal materialist who also uses digital media that um, this is the one thing that I think is really unique about his work. And to see this represented in a video piece, I think is really, um, really special. And I think this is something that's going on. He says, do you mind if it's 14 minutes, 15 seconds? I said, I've seen the piece. I don't think anybody's gonna mind sitting through 15 minutes of this. Um, so, um, okay. Uh, let's see. Uli, not uh, Gregory. Um, let's see, Alan's work. Um, okay, uh, Giovanna asked for us to talk about her, her piece. Is that uh, um, actually this is one of her trans utopia um, NFTs? And basically, the thing is, is that um, it's an NFT, and basically says I created this abstract um oh here we go Let's see here so she says that I likes the likes the story of Adam and Eve and we often need to uh, verify our identity and our computer always asks us to uh and whether we're human so um yeah, and with, there's another piece that uh, she we have on display as well as as I'm not a robot. So in her recent work, she's saying that a lot of her work is uh, reexamining our humanity, and saying you know, and um, reflecting on this idea that that the computer network asks us whether we're a robot or not. Which, I, if you think about that from a, you know, from a from just kind of a situational perspective, that's a really weird thing. In other words, if you're um, the network is asking you whether you're a robot or not. And, you know, of course we say, of course we're not, but what if you were? And, um, then, then, I, then I think that's when the story gets really interesting. So that's it. So I don't know whether, uh, Giovanna's a robot or not, but, you know, um, hope not. Let's see here. 
let's go back to the gallery. Um, let's see here. We have some more people from the, um, we have Marjan, Kazale, uh, Seda uh, Badi, Azra, uh, Azra, is that, uh, I, th I think I saw you out in the uh, audience. Do you want to say anything about your work or? So she has these surreal creatures. In other words, it has these narratives about um, um, these these otherworldly creatures that um, you know hunt I think from the Nagin sea. showed us these when you were away. Oh, I'm so sorry. I you know what she did. Sorry, <laughs> yeah, I she did. said that. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. You know, you know they're I, I again. <laughs> I am so sorry. Anyway, I just blanked. So that's all right. I'm just kind of going down through this Marzan and Casale, and then uh, is there anybody else we should uh, talk about? So, um, Subar's piece is algorithmic, uh, which is kind of interesting. This is a um, this is a, a landscape that's all done as kind of an HTML uh, table piece that loads in live on uh, on 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 a browser, which is which is kind of interesting. We've got this set up with uh, iPads. And um, so, and then um, actually for one of our piece, we've got Irshad um, Fatahia. Um, so kill, so you don't get killed. This is actually also an NFT where you have a, a, a something orbiting around, uh, orbiting around, I guess, perhaps Mars. But the one thing I really like about his work is that he, um, um, you know, he takes these classic, uh, takes these classic elements and, uh, uh, you know, works them, uh, it juxtaposes them with the, uh, the the classic Book of the King, the Persian Book of the Kings, uh, Shanane, and I think they're really humorous, actually. Um, and I think last one of the other pieces we have is uh, uh, Farnus Dorodgar, who, um, I don't know, is it being that Actually, Winona is a fairly religious town. Um, I thought that was very interesting and very Catholic, actually. So I thought it was a very interesting piece that, you know, she's dealing with the notion of the icon and uh, a little bit with the um, kind of like the, the gangsta um, uh, pixel glasses and kind of owning this person. I'm not exactly sure what's going on here, but. Um, um, she was so, explaining that uh, it's irony of uh, being good and bad in balance. So mm. when it's a bad person there and uh, baby Jesus is punishing him, like okay. very okay. bad look. <laughs> so, so, and then, and then uh, Mary is, um, you know, standing there with the, with the um, gangster glasses saying, okay, we, owed, we, we owned, we owned the bad person. So that's great. So. Um, okay, and in general, let's see, let's go back to the gallery. And I think that we run through, oh, you know what? I think that one thing I do want to do is um, I wanna go through just a couple pieces um, before, we, uh, before we head out. Um, this is a very interesting thing. Uh, piece called Retrack, and it's just something that uh, by Alex McKenzie and Dana Potter. Um, we're dedicating a room to this in that what they're doing is that they have these, um, you know, LP picture discs in, in which they actually have an augmented reality program that uh, basically reads these and then creates um, sound and um, composite and video through the iPhone from that. And then basically they're doing projections and, uh, and um, sound you know, throughout, throughout the space. So we're dedicating an entire room to this particular piece. I'm very interested in, uh, in seeing what they're doing with this is that uh, it's usually three platters. Uh, they're doing two and um, you know, so I don't think it really does much justice here. We're gonna try to get some documentation on that. Um, let's see here. Um, Dominic Rivers, he's from um, 
Indiana University. And I also, there's also one other person I want to talk about as well. Um, is that um, he's working on his MFA and he's doing a, a VHS installation here in this thing called Cucamonga. And it's um, he's dealing with the nostalgia of the videotape and he's building this this uh, this hay hut around the uh, VHS installation that he's doing. And uh, to be perfectly honest, I'm not exactly sure what's happening with this thing, but um, I think it so fits the notion of the uh, of the exhibition. I just said he when when he when I talked to him in person, he said, "Can you get me a bale of hay?" I've never had an artist I've ever dealt with ask me that question before. And I just said, sure. <laughs> so I, I just seem to remember the um, the story of the three little pigs with the first pig basically creating the uh, uh, house out of out of out of uh, out of straw. So I'm just sort of saying this is just basically hitting so many uh, so many cultural notes with me. I'm I just I just want to see what this thing is. Uh, uh, Cynthia Rubin, uh, the thing um, you're you have a piece that's uh, going in the show. Do you want to say anything about that? Are you still here? So let's see here. Let's wait. Did um hi Patrick? Did yeah, you just Cynthia. um call on I me? Just, I did. Okay, I was just turning off the fan that was blaring oh, here. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. As we're as we're wrapping up here, I realized that we hadn't talked about your work, and we got about seven minutes left. Okay, so I actually, um, I'm on my phone right now. Okay. And I'm trying to figure out how to turn on video so that, oh, here it is. Um, so that people can see me. Can you guys see me okay. now? Mm -hmm. No. Um, so the piece that I put in is a large plankton kind of banner that we still see Patrick. Oh, can't see me. I can't see you, Cynthia. You can't see me. Um, no, we still see stop Patrick video. But you oh, can you know hear what? me. Oh, you know, you know what? I'll stop sharing. You should just stop. Yeah. Okay. There she is. Here okay, I am. Good. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'd like to add what I put in the chat, which is that I'm coming to you from the south of France. And you may have seen in the chat that with one of our newer members who's Swiss, um, who's listed as AI gardening, gardener, gardening, I'm mm -hmm. not sure, mm -hmm. um, on Instagram, um, it turns out this person's name is Byrne, and I actually don't even, I know no more about Byrne than that, but Byrne works full-time at CERN, and I've been invited to visit CERN. That's fantastic. So Amazing. I'm really excited about that. Um, so that's going to be in about 10 days, I guess. So to get back to what I have in the show is it's a plankton piece that shows three versions of uh, tintinid, which is a long, thin plankton. And it's a combination of drawing and microphotography. And each one of them is kind of mixed. So each one is kind of more expressive or less expressive and telling us more about the plankton uh, by showing kind of detail of the work or not. And because I'm on my phone right now, though I do have a computer with me, but this was easier, I can't really show it to you. Um, it's on my website, so you can find okay. it. <laughs> okay, The um, let's see here. Um, here we go. Uh, plankton and Hebrew manuscripts. So it's Let's under. Um, is it the only way I could show it is if I signed out and signed back in and got on? Oh, hang my, on. Oops. How about this? Is that close? Wait, something just happened. I just lost you guys. Are no, you still there? Uh, no, Cynthia, I'm 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 uh I'm sharing your work. Oh, okay. I'm on your website. Okay, you're on my uh, website. It's yeah, not in that section. 
go oh, up to the okay. top and go to um projects ar vr uh um, vr okay and then go to the one on the far right do okay, plankton have feelings one. do plankton have feelings sure so click on that and yep. um here we are okay so it's from this series it's Great. actually if you start the video i can tell you when it gets to the right one but it's this series of kind of combining the drawing and the plankton and unfortunately the augmented reality no longer works because i was using erasma um and the piece that's in the show we will get to shortly i don't know if you can fast forward the video mm -hmm. i need to get i need to get back on oh it seems to be running slowly but people get the idea um the, okay. yes the exhibit was actually a combination of works i did in a workshop with the public and having them do plankton drawing and finding their own drawings in this kind of sea that i made of um and then my own work um, and the ar revealed more about it someday i'll put it back in but i think it actually stands on its own as showing that with the computer we can really combine approaches to making new imagery fantastic okay um thank you so much well this has so far been quite an evening and uh as i said i'm, I'm trying to like step in for Davo just a tiny bit you know it's that uh, is well this has been quite an evening and um the uh no but really the one thing that I really want to thank everybody for is that uh, I want to thank everybody for their support of the um uh, for the expert exhibition the project is that uh our institutional partners are really thrilled with um everything they're seeing and um you know and um let's see here the uh the director of the uh, Minnesota uh, you know, Maritime Art Museum is going to be at the opening. And of course, we have a catalog that will be coming out next week. And um, so uh, more um, more chances to give some money to Blurb. So, but we'll be, we'll be selling it at cost. And then um, anyhow, and, and as, a, as, an a, as, as a PDF. And I think what happens is that since we are almost at the uh cutoff point i want to ask whether anybody has any other um comments or questions and if not we'll um well and i also want to thank cynthia for being one of our esteemed judges you know it was uh your your input was really really valuable and um so and um let's see here anybody has anything else to say and um or shall we shall we call it a night well, I just wanted to uh, thank you, Patrick, for, you know, putting this um, together for hosting, you know, moderating mm -hmm. tonight and also um, opening, you know, the the exhibition up to so many um, text expressionist artists. And Absolutely. The site looks great. The show looks great. So uh, kudos. You know, one more one more thing, actually. So uh, to kind of front load, you know, kind of, uh, you know, let's let's just say let's all meet let's all meet around this next year is that the next um the next show is going to be um called wild media okay so in other words the idea of like rewilding spaces or how can we how can we you know in a, a, a do the look at the notion of uh wild or wilding or the notion of ferality you know in in media you know what is what is media in the wild or what is media that represents um you know something that we're you know interested in as a species is possibly rewilding our environment hmm. so i put that forth and i i think i thank everybody uh so much and i i as and as always i'm deeply deeply grateful to my wife and partner of all things in all things nagin at the for all her amazing amazing help in this project and everything else doesn't need to be said so thank you thank you thank you so.
Okay. Okay. Shall we do it? Shall we do a count? Shall we do a countdown? That sounds good. Um, All right. Speaking of uh, of catalogs, I'll give the um, the uh, obligatory um, little marketing push that we now have our catalog hard copy. Um, awesome. And also available Great. at textfreshenism.com as a free download. You know, it's 28 bucks, which is basically cost. You know, I didn't add any profit to it. That's just what um, Blurb charges to make mm-hmm. a book on demand, um, you know, which is a little bit steep. But one thing that is kind of a little Easter egg, I don't know if I can actually illustrate this um, on screen here. And do you have some is AR that, in there? Um, there is um, actually, if you point... Um, the Art of Vive app at the back cover, Colin. it does it turns into the drone fly through. Um, which Very is, nice, is sir. Pretty fun. Um, That's great. So one one incentive to get the hard copy. Of um, but there there are a lot of good essays in the book. Um, we have artist text. Well, Helen Harrison wrote the introduction, which is amazing. Um, then we have artist text from Suzanne Anker, Frank Gillette, myself, Patrick. Um, Don't read Paul that. Miller. That's- um, Steve Miller, Joseph Nekvital, Felix Rothschild, Christine Shuley, and Ann Spalter. So mm. very um, pleased with the you know the publication. I think it'll it'll be a nice um, you know note to posterity for the exhibition. Yeah, so. you know the one thing that I I kind of have to say about things like this, and then people kind of say, ah, oh, you know what what are you what are you doing like this? You know, is that um you know, even after all the years since it's happened, you know, it's that one of the things that's legendary is the, um, is the catalog, the cybernetic serendipity. I think it was at the ICA London. And the thing is, is that, you know, digital media tends to be ephemeral and, but nevertheless, you know, so then you think about it maybe kind of being analogous to performance, right? But then on the other hand, it's great. We, we make objects and it's also on the other hand, the other way for, um that people will go back and find something on a shelf 50 years later is a catalog Uh absolutely Absolutely. yep absolutely and you know it has its own isbn number which is a nice um you know benefit of publishing on blurb even though their their cost per book is a little steep it's relatively easy to self-publish and you know we, we do have the ability also to put it on amazon although to me at this point i mean basically it's just a 30% markup off the bat. I don't really know if it gives any more reach as far as who can buy the book. I'd be interested if anyone has any experience with that. Um, but for now, I'm leaving it on blurb. There is a nice discount if people get together and they want to order a bunch. It's 30% off on orders over 10 books okay. and 40% off on orders okay. over 20 books. Sure. So um just putting that out there and um yeah that's about it so uh, i'm gonna count us down and um anyone that wants to stick around um for the after party slash advisory board meeting whatever you want to call it um we do need to come up with a theme for the next salon um and maybe a a little a little other order of business ask tommy we we talked we talked about some good stuff okay i can't remember them yeah ask tommy cool okay all right everyone okay yeah, and now let's go in five, four, three, two, one.